Especially that butthole one. God, that's my favorite one. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to episode 14 of the Nasty Lads podcast, part of the Greenlist Podcast Network. We're a podcast from game studio Chuhai Labs, where we talk about games, game devs, Japan, and whatever else comes up. As always, we're your hosts, Kinsey and Mark. So open yourself up a Chuhai and let's go. Open yourself up a Chu High. Kinsey Burke, how the hell are you? That was a great intro. We are part of the green, did you say green list? Podcast. <laughs> Podcast. It was, it was getting a little shaky around that part. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> I love your intros. Uh, for listeners out there, we review and rate all of her intros because she wrote a pretty needlessly complex intro and uh, I think it's awesome. Uh, Kinsey, how are you? I am doing absolutely fantastic. It's a rainy Seattle day, so it's Seattle. And I had like a bowl of soup today, and I feel like that's just what you're supposed to do. So it's a pretty good day. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, We're doing pretty great over here, too. Uh, Luckily, we've got a guest with us today. We've got a certain Zach Aikman. Zach Aikman, say hello to the world. Hello, world. (laughs) Zach Aikman, tell me a little bit about why you're a guest today and what you do here at Chew High Labs. Uh, I'm a guest today because I missed last week when everyone else was on the podcast. Uh So I get my own segment today, which is great. (laughs) Hell yeah. Uh, I'm the uh, engineering manager at Chew High Labs. Uh Um, I program and... um, Make games. He, you're a programmer. Uh, you're also from Seattle, like uh, Kinsey. Also from Seattle. I'm a transplant. I'm not a true Seattle native like Kinsey. You live there for like seven years, eight years, eleven. Ele- okay, come on. I, I think uh, I think that counts. Does that count? I feel like you're- I feel like that gives you true Seattleite. Eleven years. I feel like it's got to be <laughs> what ten years, and you're a Seattleite. <laughs> that sounds fair. Have you been to a Seattle sports game? No. Eh, you are no longer allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Your passport has been revoked. Uh, so uh, Zach and I go back pretty far. We've been friends for a long time, and uh, he used to work over at 17-Bit, a Seattle company. Um, uh, Zach has worked basically for all of the Kyoto uh, companies, either on contract or um interned or mm. you literally worked <laughs> for every company in Kyoto. All three of them. All three. Kyoto, yeah. Well, I guess there's more, but Kyoto, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Q Games, now Chu High Labs and previously 17-Bit. Sure. And we love having him. Um, he's going to be growing out his hair. He's going to have what's called a skullet. For listeners that don't know, uh, uh, Zach is Can't very wait. bald. Very bald. <laughs> and we, we are looking forward to him having super long hair, just like a... Uh, um, the Hulkamania, the Hulkster. Any day now, it's going to come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, without further ado, Kinsey, you made an awesome podcast. What the hell is happening? Well, to start with, there's something real special happening right now, and that's Halloween spooky season. And we have a whole bunch to talk about because Halloween <laughs> is my favorite holiday, and you guys all have to just come along for the ride. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> And to start off with, we have some studio news regarding Halloween, which is our Carved Snowboarding Halloween Forever crossover trick-or-treat event spectacular. Just is that the full, that. is that the real title? <laughs> <laughs> Try to type that out on Twitter and it's like, no, too many characters. I'm like, but the name's so good. <laughs> Tight. But right uh, now, uh, through November 26th, you can get some spooky Halloween Forever items in Carve Snowboarding. There is seven brand new items, but there's also lots of like tricksy items. So watch out because Pumpkin Man and his friends, they like took over the mountain and place shit everywhere. <laughs> that's the plot of the game. That's, that's the plot. <laughs> we hid items and some of them aren't real spooky. <laughs> I, w- I was playing it this morning, though, to make sure like the update went all right. And I just really like that laugh when you get a fake item because, like, when you're playing it, you're like, oh, fuck yeah, new item. And then it's like, <laughs> and there's like bats and shit. And you're like, oh, you son of a bitch. It's pretty great. And it's like a, tricked. That was a, a really good witch's laugh, too. <laughs> I should have just done, done the noise for the game. I was going to say, yeah. you should have. That cackle is on point. Yeah, it's delightful. Delightful. <laughs> 
And also, Halloween Forever is currently on sale on the Nintendo Switch. It is a big old spooky 13% off. We had to, I mean, for the PR. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> 13% <laughs> off yeah. on the eShop right now. And we got an excellent episode coming up for you guys. As always, we start with uh, What Up, which is what we're playing. Mine is, of course, Halloween themed. Then we have our main topic, also Halloween themed. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we got some awesome news, and then we'll answer your questions. And since we had the anniversary episode last time, we have a, some of our questions have built up a little bit. So we have a few extra. So it'll, that'll Ooh. be fun. All right. <laughs> And now it's time for What Up, where we talk about what we're playing, because we don't only make games, we play them. (laughs) (laughs) Do your cackle again. (laughs) (laughs) And we play them, it's spooky. (laughs) We play games. (laughs) So, yeah, this is one of uh, my favorite segments, and we're going to throw you right in the fire, because... Zach, we're throwing you in the fire because uh, <laughs> Kinsey, she usually tries to get me. She tries to say, oh, Mark, you never fucking play games. I'm, I'm the only one who plays games. I keep it real. You're kind of a piece of shit. So uh, uh, which and I'll have the, all the listeners know I'm not a piece of shit. I'm only half a piece of shit. So without uh, further ado, Zach, what are you playing right now? So I, for the last month and a half, two months, I've been on a 100% Metroidvania binge. I don't know if I was like thinking about Metroid Dread and really excited for it and preparing for it, but I played through uh, Axiom Verge 1, Axiom Verge 2 for the first time, um, Super Metroid, and Hollow Knight, and then Metroid Dread when it came out. So oh, nice. the last six games I played have been Metroidvanias, and I'm not sick of it yet. Okay. But I'm on the verge. I feel like I just can't. I can't do this anymore. So it was good that I, you know, good, it, it's good that Metroid Dread came out when it did. Okay, I'm gonna before uh, like you, you haven't really talked about any games yet. Uh, I didn't hear Vania. I, five. I didn't hear Vania in that whole. Oh, Castlevania. Thread. Did you play one? No, not yet. Okay, then. Hundred percent. This two? motherfucker says. <laughs> um. So yeah. So why don't we uh, Metroid Dread? Like that's. Uh, uh. Yeah. Did you guys talk about that last time? We, we haven't talked about it. Mm-hmm. I don't. Kinsey, I don't think she's played it. I haven't played it. I haven't no. played it. No. no. Hit us. It's Hit great. Us. It's great. I, lo- I loved it. I loved it from start to finish. Um, it's, uh, it, it, oh God, it, it captures all the best parts about Super Metroid. And oh, so my, my favorite Metroid is Metroid Prime, the 3D one, because okay. that was just so cool to like go and explore a 3D world for the first time, you know, in a Metroid style and do all the things you normally do. But Metroid Dread um, from like an artistic and gameplay um, perspective, it just it nailed it on all the fronts for me. The bosses were like just hard enough to be difficult to have you play through multiple times, and all the hidden items were really fun to collect. I did hundred hundred percent it and go find everything. Um, but it was a it was a treat. It was a joy. It was a treat. A treat. A treat. Not a trick. A treat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, awesome. But like with the the monster guy, like always following you i always just feel like it would be so anxiety inducing for me and that's the it, only reason i was like i don't know if that game's for me <laughs> it is but it's limited to sections right it's like there's specific parts of the map that are carved off where you have those encounters where you have to like hide from the robot that's trying to one shot kill you so it's not all Got over it. the place okay. hmm. but it is stressful every time you have to go back in i'm like oh god no not again hmm. uh, but you get some <laughs> abilities that let you avoid them more easily like you can cloak fade or like shift face shift mm-hmm. or like you know wear an invisibility cloak so you can hide from them but it's still it doesn't help it's like it's just so stressful but once oh, you're past man. that it's it's fine it's fun that's awesome okay. it's good to hear it's not like a like most or all of the game no no no. it's it's mostly you know classic metroid style you know shoot enemies pick up power-ups all that stuff explore but those moments uh, to me it highlights the tension it's like a, a big ramp up and then going out of that area and then doing the normal Metroid stuff is almost like a reward for getting past that part. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I, I know I, I can totally see why some people would not be into it at all and hate it because it's a new mechanic and it's, you know, it, if, if you like the tension and you like the anxiety, then you'll love it. If you don't, you'll probably bounce off of it. But um, yeah, I, I liked it. Okay. Uh, so after I, playing I, that many, sorry, <laughs> that many Metroidvanias in a row, do you have a favorite? Of oh, since that you did them like all in a row. Question. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Beat you to it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, Hollow Knight is just a gorgeous and long game. Like, there's so much to see and do and explore in that game. I think Hollow Knight is probably the winner for me. But Axiom Verge 2 was really, really fun. I thought that was that was great. I was not expecting that to be as good as it was. Um, what about in the uh, the the pantheon of the Metroid series? Have you played? Have you played one? Have you played two? Have you played? I played Metroid, Super Metroid, Metroid Prime, and Dread. I haven't really played any of the GBA Got ones it. like Fusion or or mm-hmm. others. And you haven't played Metroid Two. I haven't played Metroid Two. Got it. Okay. Um, you did you enjoy Metroid One, the first one not, in the not, family? Not really, to be yeah, honest. Too dated, right? <laughs> yeah, but even like Super Metroid is dated in ways that are really frustrating. Like on the map, you can't see where doors are; you just see like walls, and you don't know. I think you just is like it a door or a had, wall. Like hundreds of people just turned the podcast off right now. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i don't really like super metroid no, 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 no. i mean like i, I, it sucks, I like it but like whatever i like it like it's iconic and you know genre defining but it, it definitely has its flaws it has its shortcomings like there's a, there's a whole level the whole meridia section is just a pain to go through um and you know the, those are the things that obviously they they fix in, in later games but when you go back and play it having played modern games modern metroidvanias you're like oh that really sucks like that you know that was a something that hmm should have fixed <laughs> in retrospect, I guess. You really should have fixed that 20 years yeah. later. God, they suck. I, I feel like a lot of older games that are like iconic have those kind of things. Like even think of something like Ocarina of Time. Like mm. people just think it's like, you know, perfect or like the best game. But then they're like, you ever play the fucking Water Temple? <laughs> like <laughs> they all hate it. So, I mean, I feel like a lot of games like so at some point, part of your favorite game is going to feel dated and horrible. It's just going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, except for Super Mario Brothers 2 on the NES. It's a perfect game from start to finish. I'll fight anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, my the game I'm playing kind of definitely relates to this. Um, so I didn't know if you wanted to hop in there, Kinsey, but I'm going for it. Um, <laughs> I'm playing for it. <laughs> the Castlevania collection right now oh, okay. the, um, uh, for the Switch. Um I'm currently playing something, something of sorrow, uh, cir- circle of sorrow, moon of sorrow. I don't know what the fuck it's called. I don't really care about story and games at all. So, um, but I've never played any of the GBA, um, Castlevania games. Mm. Castlevania is one of my favorite series for the gameplay. I, like I said, I don't care about story at all. I don't, I don't know if it's Trevor Belmont or any of the Belmonts. Um, uh, that said, it's, uh, it is definitely a series that I totally missed out on. I, I didn't have a GBA, so um, this is I'm really happy that they brought this series back. Um, I tried playing one of them, and it was absolutely terrible. I mean, no, I'm not throwing shade to Konami, but it was absolutely terrible, and I skipped it and went to something of the moon, and I uh, have been Sorry, enjoying it. Ma- Sorry, yeah, Sorry, that one, moon, moon certain no, wait, I don't know. Um, one of them is really good, and that's my very, very articulate review. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is Symphony of the Night in there? It's not. No, no, these, oh, are, okay. these are GBA games plus um, uh, Castlevania Bloodlines, the okay. Mega Drive game, and um, which is a really odd pairing. It's like they've got all the GBA games that people might have missed, and then also a Sega Master System or a Sega uh, Genesis game hmm. I, that I guess we would have missed as well, maybe. But um, it still seems like a weird pairing. Um, oh, I've is never it played... Aria of Sorrow? Are you looking oh, it yeah, up right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's I'm what not. I'm missing, yeah. I, I think it is Aria <laughs> of Sorrow. But that is a yeah. Castlevania game. I'm yeah. 90% sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is Aria of Sorrow. That's the one I'm playing and that's the one I'm enjoying. I, I have played the sequel to that, Dawn of Sorrow on the DS, and it's that's my favorite of the whole series, including Castlevania or, uh, Symphony of the Night. But um, it's it controls really well. It definitely looks like a GBA game, and uh, it, for people that like these kinds of games, Zach, you I might do. like it. I, I should uh, pick that up. <laughs> you you might like it. Up. It definitely does feel um the, dated. The controls feel a little stiff, and they feel um they feel a little more towards the old school Castlevania controls, like the stiff, uh, uh horrible jump arc, than they do to <laughs> modern. Um, really seamless, perfect physics, um, perfect video game physics, mm-hmm. you know, experience. However, uh, 19 bucks on the, on the, uh, switch. I'm loving it. I, 
So, so um, first I can say, put that in your pipe and smoke it, Kinsey. I'm playing a damn game, <laughs> all right? And don't blame me if I couldn't remember the actual title of the game, all right? <laughs> so, but Kinsey. What matters is you're uh-uh. playing it. I am. I'm playing games. <laughs> Kinsey, what, what are you playing? Um, so... I play Destiny 2 basically once a year, and I play it for the Halloween event uh-huh. because I just want to get all the spooky, dumb Halloween items and then sit on them for a year and then use them the next year. <laughs> uh-huh. So for the last probably, oh, I don't know, a month, not quite a month, a couple weeks, I've been playing Destiny almost every night because their Halloween event this year is the Haunted Sectors. And it has some really cute narration because it has, like, um, you can summon, you have to, like, do these, like, King of the Hill style summoning circles. And then once, like, that, the timer's up, then it spawns a pumpkin head man who's, like, really hard to beat. Well, easier now that I'm a little bit leveled up. The very first time I went to the haunted sector, I started shooting and it said immune. And I was like, oh, no, (laughs) I guess I'm too low of a level, but I guess what I do, just run around? Like. And tell the other people in the match kill them for me. Thanks, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was super awkward. But then I realized I had to level up. So because I hadn't played in a year, mm. uh, but it's kind of a weird, convoluted thing. Well, everything is with Destiny. There's like 500 currencies, and like, if you haven't played in a long time, you have no idea what the story is. So that doesn't even matter. But you have to like do world events, so like strikes or public events, or play the multiplayer to get these like pages. And then when you kill pumpkin men, it can like manifest the pages. So it's like a two-step process. And then you take those manifested pages and you put them in this book and you just try to fill the book up. And the whole time while you're killing enemies, you're collecting candy, which is basically the Halloween event currency. And then you can go buy fun masks and stuff. And like my like little ghost, which is like the little robot friend that you have, is shaped like a witch's hat. (laughs) <laughs> and then my little bike is like a big spider with big spider legs off the side of it. <laughs> so they just like completely throw all the lore out the window for this, don't they? It's like it's yeah, it's in a parallel universe. It sounds like pretty much. And they like try to weave it in, but in like kind of a half-assed way, where mm-hmm. like it's basically the haunted sectors, but dressed up as Halloween. Mm-hmm. So these levels already existed. And then they have a little bit of cute like narration stuff where they're like, oh, man, like the EXO, we're working on something here. And then they summoned the headless ones. (laughs) Like, I I heard they used to be guardians like you. Like, (laughs) like, really dumb, like ghost story type narration. It's pretty bad, but also funny because I feel like sometimes Destiny just goes off the deep end with its like, like, I think all sort of like MMO style games hit this point eventually Mm. where the items just all become silly and fun. Mm. And I think that's why I like the Halloween event so much because it's ridiculous and I love it. So I'm no big city lawyer, but um, (laughs) uh, is... Uh, for for those that don't know, uh, not me though, I I know, um, is Destiny a... um, That's a first-person shooter, right? (laughs) (laughs) Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. and, just, just making it, sure for the people. Like, yeah, it feels so good to play that I think that's just why I like it so much. Like, I could just like, you know, drink a couple beers and do a bunch of patrol missions in Destiny and be totally fine. And it's like mm. super chill. So I just really and, like it. But for some reason, I only play once a year. And I've, go ahead, please, please. I've, I've, I've never played it. Uh, but uh, Rami Ismail had a thread on Twitter a while back about the lore because he was like, "Hey, there's an expansion coming out or something." Here's here's the story so far. And it was like this like 70, 80 tweet thread about the history, like the story of Destiny. And I was like, this is, it's off the rails. It's crazy. It's crazy. And like I, even playing it, I don't know how you would follow or like keep that in mind, but it's like there's so much just off the wall bullshit, bullshit in the good way stuff that happens. Yeah. It's like, what? It's I, like space way, bullshit, right? You Yeah. Killed when I some... was younger, I remember playing Halo, though, and through the campaign, part of the time, I wouldn't know what was going on, and no. it kind of feels like that, but like 500 million more pages of it. Yeah. So it's a great game. It's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, what's been your favorite collectible that you've purchased with your in-game currency? Your candy. <clears throat> um, I'm really liking my spider car because uh-huh. that's pretty cool. So it's like when you are you going a on it, the little the little legs. Yeah, you get like a little speeder bike. You get to like speeder Star bike. Wars. Yeah, a little what, speeder bike. What, can you run over enemies? Some of them can shoot. My most of them can't. Can you but run like, over your friends? I don't know if you can run over enemies. I hope. What kind I of game is this? Run, I know, right? You can't All run over fun. your friends and they die, and you're like, "Oh, sorry, my spider bike is just so wide." Yeah, but you've been drinking beers. You just said earlier you're chugging beers. It makes perfect sense. I mean, can't blame but, you. It's pretty cute bike. And then when you hit the gas, so you like go faster, the little legs like go back so, because it's little spiders flying through the air. God. Oh, nice. it's cute. Like right now I unlocked the sweeper bot mask and it's like made out of paper and there's like toilet paper tubes taped to the side of it. Cause like all the masks like look homemade and it's great. Oh, okay. That's pretty uh, okay. cute. All right. All right. Destiny, you won me over. <laughs> I, I mean, I like the idea of a 1990s Halloween costume because that's what we had in the 90s. We didn't have some fucking fancy ass shit. We had duct tape crap that was put on us. <laughs> True. Like we were all like Vietnam vets for some reason. <laughs> Everyone's costume was at least half duct tape. Yeah, it was tight. <laughs> Well, uh, I like what we're all playing. I like that we're all playing uh, spooky games. And it's conveniently, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I mean, well. you didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Uh, you definitely meant to. You absolutely I meant, meant to. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a purposeful grimace and a terrible smile, join Nikki and Wyatt as we stomp our way through the history of Toho's Dai Kaiju films in Discuss All Monsters. Are you telling me we're going to discuss all monsters? We won't stop until there isn't a monster left to discuss. Smash that play button like Godzilla and King Kong smash an 18th century Japanese pagoda. Only on the Greenlit Podcast Network. And now on to our weekly topic and decided that we would combine all the things. Japan, Halloween, spooky shit, video games. And what do you get? Yokai. Also, yokai yokai are just like really, really cool because they and like if anybody doesn't know what a yokai is, it is a supernatural creature from Japanese folklore. And they vary from being like adorable and tricksters to like really, really, really scary and will murder you. And so I feel like that's kind of what makes them fun. So I'm no big city lawyer, but um, would you what, what's the purpose of them? Is it to teach lessons? Is it to is it like what? what you know what I mean? I, H- hit me. I feel like some of them are definitely to teach lessons. Like when you think of the one that's like uh, a, a sandal who if it's mistreated and forgotten, it like grows arms and a face and legs. And like wanders around your house at night, like causing trouble because getting dirt you on your floor. Yeah, because you didn't take care of your shoes. Oh, that's, that is a good lesson, <laughs> that, that, right? <laughs> all right, all right. And then Everything some of them, I just think, just stem from Japanese folklore. Hmm. Got it. I, I, uh, you know, uh, wasn't wasn't raised here, not Japanese, but everything I've heard about and read about is that like the the stories that they tell kids, mm-hmm. they're not. They're not wholesome, you know. It's not like uh, like Aesop's <laughs> fables or like parables with a good ending, you know. It's like if you if you disobey mom and daddy, a demon's gonna drag you off to hell, and that and like and that's it. Damn, it's so it's so dark and brutal. And I mean, Aesop's I love it. fables are similar. It's they like are, if you yeah. go in the woods, you'll yeah, get yeah. molested. That's true. I mean, that's true. Like, there was like Hansel and Gretel, and like, you know, like all the dark endings, and for you kids. die no matter what. Yeah, like she eats you. Like what? Like what are you teaching me, Aesop? <laughs> Like I hate all of these things. I uh, but you know what? I'm here for this today because it's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and probably some of the most widely known yokai are definitely like the kitsune. So that's like a fox, normally a shapeshifter. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it can say it can like shapeshift into a woman and then can be tricksy. Right. Tricksy fox. Tricksy. Lady. Yeah. <laughs> and they're also known as the messengers of Inari. So if you've ever been to an Inari shrine in Japan, there's usually foxes there too. Like, well, fox statues. It'd be cool right. if there's real foxes. Just a bunch of foxes. That'd I do cool. like foxes. They're cute. Right? The they're statues have these cute. cute little red handkerchiefs too. Yeah. 
Oh, because Super they're cute. stylish? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> why, why else? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not symbolic of anything. Uh, oh, no, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the symbolic of? I have no idea. Oh, I thought you were some weird, like, like people would kill it and then the, have sex the blood with it. Of the- <laughs> like, I didn't know what the symbolism was. Like, you were, it's definitely not symbolic, wink, wink. Like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So it's absolutely not symbolic. Of anything. <laughs> no, I have no idea. But I doubt it's from fashion. Okay. All right. It's not symbolic of anything, wink, wink. All right. I'm going to fucking use that. Because like, that was totally apropos of nothing. Like, like if you you threw a wink in there. I didn't. I All right, to... you son of a bitch. All right. Just make it sure. I didn't miss that. All right. And I'm thinking, at least for gamers, the most known yokai is the Tanuki. Even though, well, mostly because, yokai? you know, Mario. Yeah. Oh, Dude, he's a okay. yokai. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. He, Yeah, he's a trickster, and he's got big old balls. I wish the Mario suit had big old balls. <laughs> so um, I, I could be have misremembering, but the Tanuki floated down from the heavens with his big balls, right? Wasn't Didn't he use his balls as a parachute to float down from heaven? Like, I'm... Okay, you guys don't know that? No, I uh, no, but no, I, I, actually I, believe, I believe it, I, believe, yeah. I think that's the correct... <laughs> Uh, story, I believe that could also be like from a Tim Robbins book. I don't <laughs> remember if it's one of those. Um, whatever. Uh, that's that's my uh, knowledge. Most people well, also, are probably picturing him with like a like a Totoro t- style leaf. Nope, big old oh. ball parachute. <laughs> <laughs> big old balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the? Uh, I watched it recently. The Studio Ghibli film Pompoko Pom Pompoko Pom Pom Pompoko. Something, something, but it's about this family of tanukis that are getting displaced in the forest. Ooh. But they shapeshift into humans, and they like, you know, they have nowhere else to live, so they turn into humans and they go into the city to try and like make a living. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really sweet, you know. It's like Studio Ghibli, yeah. sweet, touching, heartwarming kind of thing. Um, but they definitely bounce around on their inflated balls in that movie and <laughs> play them yeah. like drums. Yes. Hell yeah! Yes, Just like me. I was a, I was a it. tanuki in another life. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, um, Kinsey, <laughs> let's move on from that rapidly. Um, <laughs> well, tanuki also really likes sake, so shit. Yeah. Right. Big old balls, big old jug of sake. That's a yeah. Friday night. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think we were supposed, like Kinsey was supposed to, or rather, Kinsey gave us homework to make us go look up our favorite. Um, uh, uh, yokai, uh, yokai. That <laughs> <laughs> I obviously did, did my homework. Uh, so yeah. So I'm only I'm gonna jump in and say uh, I looked them all up, and I'm 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 rather confused. I'm bad at homework, and um, uh, Tengu is definitely my favorite for a couple of reasons. Um, my first time in Japan, I was with some buddies, and and. There was a giant Tengu, and I was very confused by it, and I took a million photos, and I did research at the time about it, and um, I like I like Tengu. He's just a scary little bastard, man. I mean, he, is he a devilish character? I don't know. Um, this is something about him. Uh, when I asked Zach about Tengu this morning, he was like, yeah, I have a Tenga, and... <laughs> And, and and I'm like, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about that that object you purchased. This is payback for the wink, isn't it? <laughs> this is payback for the wink. <laughs> and for listeners, you can go to uh, tenga.com slash Zach Aikman to save up to 10%. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So um that's what I got. I, <laughs> uh, I uh I I don't know a lot about them. I think we need to uh I need to pass the torch on to the master of mm. of uh, yokai. <laughs> the master of yokai? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> well, I also picked a favorite and I've had a few favorites for a while, but uh mine has got to go to the butthole yokai. It's gotta go. That's the that's the perfect one. I love it because mm. its name is Shurime, and mm. it wanders streets at night and dressed like a man in a kimono and will try to like beckon people. And when they come over, they realize, well, number one, this guy's got no face, and number two, he fucking drops his kimono, leans over, spreads his cheeks, and it's just a big old eyeball. 
<laughs> where his butthole should be. Where his butthole and should be. <laughs> what I love about it is that a lot of yokai have these like stories where like they're tricksters or they, you know, they'll do this thing. If you don't give them like hard candy, then they'll murder you. Like there's all these like stories and mm-hmm. like reasonings. They're like, well, you know, this yokai was troubled as a person and now they're a ghost and all this like backstory. Mm. This guy doesn't really have a backstory. It's just like <laughs> he likes messing with people. It's funny. Okay, so I'm just imagining <laughs> he's he's like uh, he gets in the uh, spread eagle position. He's sitting on the ground, and then he like spreads his cheeks, and there's just this little eyeball. And he's like, "Hello," and just winking Hello. at you, yeah, just a little <laughs> wink, wink. You know, I, I I like this character. I'm gonna do more research, and I'm gonna report back on why I also like that little uh, seeing that little eyeball in his butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me laugh. <laughs> Uh, Zach, you had homework too. I did have homework, yeah, uh, and I, I, I did, I did do it. Um, what's the the name of the lady with the giant cut across her face? Oh, some oh. something Ku- on like Kuchisake Ona. Kuchisake Ona. Uh, she's she's creepy. I was I was reading about her on Wikipedia, and they have a diagram of the conversation tree that you'll have with her, and she approaches you, and she's wearing a mask right across her face, and she says, "Am I pretty?" And if you say no. She stabs you with scissors. If you say yes, she takes the mask off. And then she says, what about now? If you say no again, she cuts you in half. And if you say yes, then she just cuts your face to look like hers. There's no, there's no good outcome. Like the dialogue tree is like dead, Damn. dead, cut across the face. Um, but I also like her because uh, I've been um, uh, working at USJ. We've been doing a project there. And in the same building, they're doing a Halloween, like a haunted house kind of event. And there's all these people dressed up as like yokai or scary figures and demons oh, and stuff so like cool. that. And they're kind of like behind the scenes, right? And and I, I was walking down the hallway and this girl was holding a door open and she had on a mask that looked like that lady where she has like this giant slit across her face. And but then she's like, she's super polite. She's like, oh, it's got a I got to go Zaymas. And just like yeah. this juxtaposition of like, <laughs> you are creeping me out, but you're so kind and nice. And it was just a really unsettling feeling. Did you tell her she was pretty? I did not. Okay. I didn't. I didn't uh, even come avoided. close to talking to her. Okay. Yeah, I know what happens now. <laughs> yeah, I that, did hear a story though about Kuchi Sakayona, where if she approaches you, but you happen to have like hard candy in your pocket, and you give that to her, then she'll just uh, go away. Oh, that's easy. Person at, person at the Universal Studios walks up to you, and you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> and she's like, take, take like the candy. throwing candy. Like, <laughs> Some some other suggested methods of getting out were to tell her that she looks average, which will buy you enough time to run away, or throw money at her. That works oh. too. I I've never told someone they look average. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would uh, like have come to that conclusion. Like, hmm, what do I do? Ah, average. Yes. Okay. You get to the point where she like takes off the mask and she's like, "What about now?" You're like, mm, "Average." Mm, average. That big old cat on your face. <laughs> You're a five. Like that. <laughs> that's fucked up, man. Yeah. That's an abusive relationship. Either way, I'm just saying, like, like I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable that we got to this point with this particular yokai. That was your favorite one. It's my favorite one. Because it like it reminded you of past relationships. No, it rem- <laughs> <laughs> It reminded me of the lady at USJ. It was really sweet. Um Kappa are also cool. I like Kappa. Yeah. They're cute. Um and cap cap captain Animal Crossing, yeah. I'm super excited to see him and listen to his songs. Yeah, his songs are so good, and he takes you to like Tortimer Island on the earlier ones, and like right. And for those that don't know what a kappa is, they are not a turtle, as cat would make you think, but they are a water spirit, and their stories range from playful and tricksy to drowning people. So. <laughs> oh, cool. I, I like these yokai. Now that we're talking about them, we got the eyeball butthole. We've got like some lady that just like kills you for if, just answering a question. Uh, we've got uh, the drowning turtle. Um, we got huge ball guy. I, I, I connect with these a lot more than maybe I thought I would. Um, uh, I, I, I really like this. That's been very yeah. educational. Yeah. I did pick a favorite yokai that was from a video game as well, because uh-huh. I think a lot of people know this character, but I don't think a lot of them know that it's based on a yokai. So if you've ever played Majora's Mask or Oracle of Ages, 
if you go to like there's like an inn and it has a bathroom and if you go there at midnight there's like a hand coming out of the toilet yeah 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 and it's just like question marks is their name and they're just like paper and then like that's like a little side quest is you find the toilet hand some paper yeah yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) i didn't realize it was a yokai wait you have to wipe your ass and give it paper no it's a hand that comes out of the toilet but he's asking for and, paper. And it's, I mean, it's asking for paper. Can yeah. you not piece that? I mean, he feeds off of uh, your waist. <laughs> Just hanging out. It's it's is is it a bidet? Does it help you out? Like sort of sounds like it. Maybe that's how they decided to like make bidets. It wasn't like, hey, what if our butt was cleaner? It was like, well, since we already have this guy doing the work, what if we just give a robot his job? <laughs> Now oh, he doesn't and then you have don't to have to use paper. Toilet. Then you don't have to use paper. You don't so have to use paper, never, like, reach and you can clean your eyeball, which is where your butthole should be. <laughs> <laughs> I like these yokai. We got the toilet yokai. Yeah, keep them coming, Kenzie. <laughs> but they're so funny because it uh, the the toilet hand. I was gonna say a name, but I was like, no, his name's fucking question marks. Toilet hand. Sorry, buddy. Uh, he's based on Kurote who is like, it's also known as like the black hand. And that's like a big black hairy hand that's in toilets. And like, there's like a pretty cool story about him that I read when I was doing research for this, where like some lady was going to the bathroom and she screamed and then her husband ran in and he, and she was like, there's a hand in the toilet. Something touched me. And he's like, what the fuck? And then like, he ended up slicing the hand off with his katana. And then he had it in like this box. And then these, Like, as you do. And then these three priests visited who were priests, but they were actually shape-shifting yokai. Uh. And, like, they were like, something's wrong in this house. Like, something's in here. So then the guy went and got the hand and showed them, thinking that they were priests and that maybe they could, like, help. Mm. And then they all got upset. And one of them was like, that's my hand! And took it (laughs) and, like, put it back on and then just left. What? (laughs) So the moral of the story is uh, let... Uh, someone have their hand near your butthole while you're taking a shit. I thought it was always bring your katana <laughs> to the bathroom. And then give yep. the hand back? I think back. that's the actual moral of the story. Oh, oh, I guess <laughs> that, that, that could be a moral. Like, always be prepared. Keep your guard up all times. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. But I just think yokai are so fun and weird, and they have such a crazy range to them. Like, there's a couple podcasts that I've listened to before that are just like Japanese scary stories that are all based on yokai. Mm. And they all have like such cool stories. I like them. I don't know. And they're like Halloween and rad. I don't know. <laughs> Spooky butthole hand. <laughs> I, li- I like all of these. Um, this has been a really, really dumb and awesome uh, topic. Thank you, Kenzie. When, when you come to Japan, there's a, there's a yokai street that we'll <gasps> take you to and they do like a parade every year. Where everyone oh dresses God. up as yokai. We're a hundred percent going to that. Even Hell if you yeah. don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I've got a great idea for a podcast. You and me, we watch movies, right? And some of them are kind of bad, and so we make fun of them. But maybe some of them are good. Chris, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And eat snacks. Movie Fighters, an original idea on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Next up, we got the news. And we're a little bit light on news because we're heavy on questions, which is pretty rad. (laughs) So to start off with, uh, the new Uncharted movie dropped a new trailer. And we already know, of course, that Tom Holland is Nathan Drake and Mark Wahlberg is playing Sully. But what did we think of the trailer? What did you guys think? Did you watch it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to preface with I've never played a single Uncharted game. Same. Uh, but I do know it's Indiana Jones, it, but now-ish. Um, and I do know that fans wanted Nathan Fillion to be uh, Nathan Drake. Um, that said, uh, the, I guess it looks cool. Does it Does it look cool? I, I can't. Is it fair for me to even judge it? I like. Okay. I think so. Fuck it. It doesn't look that cool. <laughs> It doesn't, you know what? It doesn't look that fun. Um, it, it looks to me. It looked kind of boring outside of the scenes where like he's falling out of the plane and mm. trying to get back on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's I, like some, that scene's directly from the game too. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd seen that before in some of the like gameplay footage of Uncharted. Uh, someone, someone on Twitter said, uh, you know, if the movie was all Tom Holland being thrown out of a plane, I would totally watch it. Um, <laughs> and because I, they hate Tom Holland, they hate, and I guess, they I guess, because they die. hate Tom Holland. I, I, I think he, I think he's a good. You know, I, I like him in Spider Man, and um, uh, but I, I don't really see him as an Indiana Jones type character right. at all. You know, he's like yeah. uh, Shia LaBeouf to. Indiana Jones, you know, he's like, what the hell did you just say? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever disgrace that name. No, but he's like, he's like, he, he seems like a sidekick character. Oh, to a Nathan Drake, you know, Shia LaBeouf is dope. Sure. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's dope, but you know, you wouldn't cast Shia LaBeouf as Indiana Jones, right? No, you would cast him as whatever his character name was in that movie. Like I don't know, I didn't Skanky see it. or <laughs> Skanky. It was it was a bad name. It was it was a really really bad name. I don't know what it was. It was just like Trash Boy, or I mean, it wasn't a good name. So, um, uh, Kinsey, what did you think? <laughs> so I've played all of the Uncharted games. Holy shit! And like I do see how like they could make a really good movie. I understand that like Nathan Drake. Because he's in a video game, he's a little bit one-sided. Like, all he really does is he makes, like, sarcastic comments and goes after treasure. Like, mm, right. that's that's kind of his whole character. But uh, to see how they, like, well-round him as a real person in a real movie might be cool. But I'm also not really sold on the character choices either. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll still see it and maybe it'll change my mind. Like, we all had doubts about Sonic. And I actually really liked Sonic. I thought it came out really well. <laughs> Wait, was it good? I didn't see it. The one, yeah. the one with uh, with Jim Carrey as Robotnik. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's alright. I haven't yeah. seen it. Yet. Yeah, it's on. yeah, it's better than it's it's better than it better has than any it right be. to yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that's that's the exact phrase for it. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's worth it actually. Yeah. And uh, I agree that the coolest thing in that trailer was when he was falling out of the plane, and but I. If you've ever seen the Uncharted fan film with Nathan Fillion, like, I know that Nathan Fillion is probably too old to play Uncharted, especially in the movie's premise, which is how he met Sully. So it's like way long ago. I get mm. that. But that fan film that's on YouTube, it's like 15 minutes long. And it's what I, it's what I wanted. Like, it's right. excellent. The like casting is excellent. Like, uh, Nathan Fillion is actually really like changed my mind that he was too old to play Nathan Drake completely. Mm. So if you haven't seen it, I'd, I'd say go check it out if you're an Uncharted fan or even if you're not, because it's only like 15 minutes. So it's worth I'm, a while. I'm not an Uncharted fan. Um, not to say I wouldn't be, because I, I mean, I, I feel like that's like a perfect genre for me. But uh, that that uh, short film is awesome. Mm. I am a huge Nathan Fillion fan. So, I mean, he's the shit. So yeah, he's really maybe I should play that. Uncharted. Where should I start? Where should somebody start with Uncharted? Just like from the get go? Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> There's even the like Uncharted collection now, so. All right. Mm. That's probably the easiest way to do it. That was. They're not rude. that long, so. <laughs> slight, slight tangent. Speaking of fan films, uh, have, mm -hmm. has anyone seen the the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom fan film? Like these teenagers did a remake, shot by shot remake of Temple of Doom. I have. In seen the, it. Is it good? It's absolutely incredible. It's okay. uh, this uh, is a. This I heard is a about it. Uh, it is shot for shot. I think it was made over like the course of ten years. Yeah, yeah. And, and they so age through it. They age through yeah. it, and uh, the technology of their cameras changes, yeah. and uh, their skill level changes. I mean, it is shot. Almost every shot is in the the film. Yeah, and like the angles are right. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. We need, need more of that. that. We need more of that. And I remember reading about it. Uh, yeah, you need to watch it. You need to uh, go to a legal uh, dispensary in the state of uh, Washington, and you need to uh, legally. That kind of movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty. No, it's not really that kind of movie. But it's just, it's just a silly little movie. It's really cool. But, That's awesome. I'll definitely have to watch that. Yeah. And speaking of none of that, remember destroying <laughs> your hands uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> playing Mario Party back yes. in the nineties. Oh yeah. Well. Mario Party Superstars, actually, it comes out the day this podcast releases, so it comes out today, and it's a has about 100, I believe, of the old mini games in it. They chose 100 of them to bring back, but one of them that's coming back is Tug of War, which is the game that launched those crazy padded gloves that they would send out if you, like, your mom called and complained. 
But tug of war is a one versus three mini game where it's tug of war, like what it is. But one person is like uh, has Bowser strength. So there's one Bowser on the one side and then the three other characters on the other. And you're all you have to do is spin the joystick. And on the 64 controller, it was just so much more comfortable and fast to do mm-hmm, like it right. with your palm, like flat palm in it and just going mm-hmm. around like and that just apparently destroyed a lot of people's hands. And I mean, I remember that happening. My parents didn't call and complain and get me a glove, which now I'm a little bit. The collector in me is a little bit upset by. <laughs> I don't even know what they look like, so I'm going to get a lot of joy out of looking at these crappy gloves. <laughs> like <laughs> that sounds awesome. Like yeah, did you guys play this? Yes, absolutely. I, I I didn't. I never had it, but we would go to like a you know friend of the family every summer, and they had kids that were like around my same age. They had three, you know, four four kids, and I didn't have friend. I didn't have like neighbors. I lived out in the sticks, so I didn't have people around mm-hmm. me to play these games with. But when we went over there and we played it, that's literally all we played for like you know the week that we were there. And I nice. I got calluses and blisters on my palm from that game. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I remember loving it, and I think what the best part is is not only did they bring it back because I think it is a little bit of a fan favorite as well, and it's sure. definitely notorious if anything. But yeah. now when you like go to play it, there's like a little disclaimer that pops up, that's like don't use your palm; it'll hurt you and the controller. Use your use your thumb on the thumbstick, but mm-hmm. then you can't sure. go as fast. No. Right, that's kind of, <laughs> they know what they're doing. They know by throwing that warning on there that they're like recreating yeah. the culture of that. That's pretty smart. They're going to get people yeah. to break their controllers and have to buy new controllers, but because they have a warning on there, it's all good. Yep, it's no pretty gloves smart. this time. I'm for I, it. I'm, I, don't, I don't know if I could use my palm on the Switch. I think you'd have to have the N64 Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, right? yeah, because like, that would be really uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. Yeah. So low. Yeah. And, like, the joysticks nowadays are a lot shorter. Like, the 64 mm. one's, like, pretty tall. Mm-hmm. So it works really well with, like, flat palm it, flat palming it. I guess flat that's right. But... Yeah, let's... <laughs> Got a flat palm. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to try it with my little Joy-Con. Like, especially, like, Mario Party, you basically have to just use the Joy-Con separately. So mm. then it's, like, this tiny little Joy-Con, and you're like, no, oh, I got worse. it. Like, <laughs> you're like, yeah. All right. I love it. I hate all of this. Uh, um, I, I, and we've got some breaking news. It's not breaking at all. But um, the Nintendo Switch Online service, that just launched. Just launched. Um, and n- only one of us here has played it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I played the first five seconds of Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really gotten to dig into it yet. Right. I was just looking at all the games on there. But uh, Sin and Punishment, I'm really excited for. Uh, Mario Tennis, uh, it was a great game too. And there was something else. Besides Ocarina of Time. That's so, all I can remember. Uh, for, for, I'm sure everyone knows um, there's going to be N64 games and Mega Drive games or right. Genesis games. Um, and it's a 10 of each, something like that. Yeah, about that. And I, it's 30 additional dollars uh, a, a year. Yeah. Like $50 I think it was like, a year. Yeah, it was like, like 50, 50, 54 or something. For, for online me. services. Yeah. Um, so I looked through the games yesterday and I think that I, there's three games that I want to play. And I really want to play one of them, but I, I question if if thirty dollars a year is worth uh the money. What's the game? So I want to play Rystar, but I mean like I uh. or Ristar, I don't know how to say it. Uh I really like that game. I also want to play Sin and Punishment. Um so there's two games. Um Kinsey, do you see yourself paying a million dollars? Uh I'm definitely gonna get it at some point. I've seen yeah. that they've had a lot of like frame rate issues and issues mm. with latency with the controller and mm. so i'd really like to see maybe that patched before i do it but i know i'm gonna like doesn't matter if i complain about it i'm i'm gonna do it especially like now that some of the games have online functionality like that's right. awesome mm-hmm. that's true yeah. so i'm i'm definitely gonna do it and i do want to check out sin and punishment i've only played a little bit of it and then i played the wii one but i haven't really checked it out on the 64 so i'm looking forward to that yeah, I guess I am gonna just get it. I was gonna get it even if people complained. I mean, yeah. So I mean, the price, yeah. like the price for thirty dollars a year. I yeah, you know, I get that you don't own the game, so it seems mm-hmm. it's a bit of a hard sell. But also, like I, you know, how often am I gonna go back and play those games after I've played them again? Like I'm playing them for nostalgia's sake, right? Or because I never got to experience on the sixty four, and if I just buy like pay thirty dollars for a year subscription and then cancel it. 
I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Like right. to me, it's yeah. the easiest it, way to go back and play those. So is it? So it was already twenty five a year. Is it an additional like twenty five or thirty? Yeah. So then it's like fifty a year. Yeah, it's about fifty a year. But you also get the Animal Crossing uh, uh like pass right. if you're into that. Yeah. Which I am. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Maybe it'll make me go back to my island, and everyone's gonna be pissed. <laughs> I, I feel like it was a really good marketing move to have like you for Animal Crossing people. You have uh, the people that like N sixty four, and then we have we've got the Genesis. It, I, it is pretty smart, like as a package, because yeah. like I only, I mean, I only want to play three games total, but they're on both platforms, mm. and it does show that um, it's like it crosses our interests really well. Mm. Yeah, uh, totally. And, and I, I oh, go ahead, please. Sorry, say so the price. I guess thinking about it, it's not because it's a year. I mean, how many of us at the studio probably have Game Pass? Right. And, you know, mm-hmm. we don't own own those games either. Yeah. And that's like a monthly thing. So it's way more. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, even last night I turned on PlayStation Plus for the first time and realized, oh, shit, I've been paying for PlayStation Plus for the last three months and I haven't gotten any of the free games. Uh-huh. Uh, I always do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, actually just learned yesterday that there's an app, and you can just hit uh, on the app. You can uh, hit add to uh, That's nice. add to library, yeah. and you don't have to download anything. Uh-huh. But um, uh, it, yeah. So basically, we we already pay for all these services. What's another one? Like, come <laughs> yeah. on. And, and I do think that the Nintendo Switch Online, when it first launched, and it had um, uh, the the SNES and the online games. Like they've done a really good job of continuously adding new titles to mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. yeah. And like, there's a very wide, a, a wide array of titles, and I think that they'll just continue to do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, yeah, they're nickel and diming us, but at least the products are good. Yeah, I'm for it. Well, I mean, the the big thing that came out yesterday was the emulation being uh, whack, I guess, for some games, mm-hmm. like the water effect and the. Ocean or the water temple in Ocarina of Time looks completely different because of the way they're doing alpha blending and whatever emulation they're doing for the 64 isn't as good as what you would find in, you know, illegal, not illegal emulators, but non-official emulators. Right. So, but I'm, you know, that's the kind of thing that they can, they can fix and I'm sure they will when enough people raise a stink about it. So Interesting. Oh, totally. Next up, we got Call Me Up, where we answer your Discord questions. If you ever want to send us a question, just join our Discord, Chew High Labs, and go to the channel Call Me Up and uh, ask it there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ask it there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna ask the first one because, um, and I'm going to ask this one to Kinsey specifically. It's, uh, what's your favorite indie game studio, and what are some of your favorite titles from them? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But but I I do think this one is fair to ask you because like like you've been with us for a year now. Um, but before that year, or like what what is your favorite indie game studio? So, I when I was reading this question, I decided I was going to go with publisher. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Because but- I can think of a lot of studios, but some of the really small ones, some of them have only made you know one game. Mm-hmm. Right. And sure. so putting a bigger umbrella on it, uh, I true. I decided I would change the question for myself. <laughs> I, I, I think that's actually fair because like if we could rattle off all these awesome uh, studios and maybe they've only done one big smash hit mm. and yeah. they're kind of still working on that game for years and years. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I was really thinking about it on what like publishers that like have made games that I always like. And honestly, I don't even... I, they, I know that they have like some bigger backers behind them, but they are seen as indie from the titles that they publish, and that would be Annapurna. Honestly, like oh, a lot of the times when I see a game and I'm like, "Oh, that looks awesome," it's Annapurna. Got like, it. <laughs> okay, because like they, I mean, I loved like What Remains of Edith Finch, but they also publish Wadham, which I also really like, mm. and I just and like uh, Donut County. And like mm-hmm. all these games that I just really, really enjoyed, they all just turned out to be by the same like publisher. And I just, mm-hmm. I like almost everything they do. Okay. Zachary? Good answer. Um, I've got three. Is that okay? Do I have to pick one? <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, Red Hook Studios. Okay. Uh, guys that are doing uh, Darkest Dungeon, 
or did Darkest Dungeon mm-hmm. and Darkest Dungeon 2, which is an early access right now. Just go check it out and play it. They're great. Um, that was a great game, but also like the people there are just lovely. Like Chris Barreso is one of the nicest folks you'll meet. Um, uh, Witchbeam, who made Assault Android Cactus, and they have a new game that's about to come out called Unpacking, which is also lovely. It's a game about unpacking, like taking things out of boxes and putting them away in a room. Mm. And it's really calm and meditative and pretty and just uh, a treat to play. And the third would be Brace Yourself Games. Uh, you bastard. Who did Crypt of the Necrodancer. You bastard. Cadence of Hyrule. <laughs> uh, in, uh, Titans of Industry and uh, Phantom Brigade. They're great. All right. So mine was going to be Brace Yourself uh, Games. But I did <laughs> I did have uh, two backups, just so you know. Um, uh so yacht club, uh, yacht club games, mm. uh, obviously for Shovel Knight, but you know they're one of those studios that has like a one pinnacle title. What else do they do? Um, I should know this, but what? Uh, well, see, Let's see. <laughs> uh, well, I know they just published a a, a Switch title. Oh. Um, so, but I I don't know enough about it. But I do have another backup that I'm that I'll stand by, and that's Vlambeer. And uh, I don't think they exist anymore. Mm. But um, you know, Super Crate so. Box yep. and uh, Ridiculous Fishing. Uh, I've probably sunk a uh, hundred or two hundred hours into su- Super Crate Box, mm. and the game you 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 see the entire game in less than one minute, yeah. and yet I've put in a hundred <laughs> hours into that fucking game. Um, there's just something about that that studio that really resonates with me because all their titles are really really small and really efficient, mm-hmm. and um, I want them to come back and make more just bananas games. So, uh, I love that's. It. Next question. All right. So this one is Halloween-y, and that is, what is your favorite horror movie, and what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, Zachary. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, um, so I'm, I, I haven't seen, uh, this is awful, I haven't seen a lot of like classic horror Halloween films. I haven't seen Halloween. I haven't seen Friday the 13th. Okay. I know. Yeah. Okay. So to let that sink in for yeah. a moment. Um, but, but I'm, I'm super into psychological horror films like, uh, get out us Midsommar, Good. the witch. Um, but I, I was reminded of a movie recently that did scare the shit out of me. And that was the Babadook. That was a great, Ooh. great horror film. Not really Halloweeny, but scary as fuck. Okay. <laughs> Highly recommended. All right. Um, I'm, I'm a huge, uh, uh, horror movie fan and my, like I could name, uh, dream warriors or any of those classic ones, but I'm going to name a Neo classic. And that's by that's Astron six's father's day. It's about, um, the father's day killer who, um, I, I, he comes and has sex with fathers and then kills them. <laughs> on father's yeah. day uh and it's a it's it's like a it's a Pacific. yeah yeah no it's <laughs> it doesn't make any sense and his name is uh the villain's name is chris fuckman and uh <laughs> and uh it, it's it's a yeah it's a send up to 80s movies and it's just uh, a really it's a passion movie and it's really fucking great and my very first time in japan i flew to tokyo to see to the opening of the film because i was that obsessed with it so it's still my favorite kinsey what is yours uh I don't I was I actually had a really hard time coming up with a favorite. Mm. Like I normally like the way my brain works, sometimes I'll pick a favorite of something like favorite video game or whatever. But like with music, a lot of the times I'll have like my favorite of right now kind of thing. And I really like horror movies a lot, especially like 80s B horror, like teenage slasher movies are like some of the best from the 80s. Right. Nope. And mostly because I'm a big wimp and I actually get scared in horror movies. <laughs> so, like, I recently watched the Netflix uh, trilogy Fear Street and it's not oh, great, shit. but I really, really enjoyed it. Like, it mm. it felt like, you know, what the older slasher movies with like a modern twist that was like a little bit spooky. And mm. I really enjoyed it. I okay. really liked it a lot. And the scariest movie I've ever seen. So wow. I always feel like the biggest lame in the room when I talk about this movie uh-huh. because there's something about it that was just really traumatic. Okay. <laughs> so in high school, I went and saw The Ring. And oh, okay. The oh. Ring was filmed close to my house, at least parts of it were. Right. Hmm. And so I had that like added level of like going to my friend's house, I could drive by the barn. 
Oh, and it is I was a scary like, movie. Hmm. I mean, in your defense. Like, yeah, I've never, I haven't watched it since it came out, but I don't know what it is. Every few years, as a sort of braver 36 year old, I'll still have a ring nightmare. And I'm like, <laughs> how is this so traumatic? Like, I was actually talking about it in my Japanese class the other day, and uh, the teacher also agreed. And then we started going over the vocabulary like traumatic. And wow. like, <laughs> Damn. So, yeah, the ring is really scary, and I'm sure if I maybe if I rewatched it, I would be like, okay, I see the campiness now because it was a long time ago. But no, I don't know if I want to take that up. chance. No, I and I hold that up. Chance. It, it holds up. <laughs> All right, next up, not Halloween, but that's okay. It's it's Halloween adjacent, and that is. Cherry blossoms or fall foliage. So this is in reference to uh, the seasons in Japan, for those that don't know. In the springtime is cherry blossom season, and the fall is obviously like fall colors because like the momiji leaves and stuff in Japan is like really, really beautiful. This is a rapid fire one. Mm -hmm. Fall. Yeah. Fall. Fall. Easy fall. Yeah. Cherry blossoms are great because it's like, oh, it's warm again. We get to go outside. It's pretty, but you can't beat the fall foliage. No, no, it's the best. It's yeah, incredible. Yeah, I think I agree. And fall colors are all the best colors. It's all the, like, I, the warm, I, great colors. Mm-hmm. And I like easing into winter as opposed to like, uh, like in the spring, you're, you're still kind of cold and you're still like, it, it's, it's, okay. it's like summer's not quite there. But when you're easing into winter and you get to wear your hoodies and you get to wear your beanies and, and it's all warm and you get to have warm sake, it's the shit. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Next question Do y'all like donuts? Where do you prefer to get your donuts? Do you like them with coffee, without, with something else? Is there any donut adjacent baked good that you prefer? It's a very involved uh, question. There's a lot, <laughs> lots of them back there, but yeah. Yes, yeah. I like do- um Krispy Kreme glazed donut. That's the it, it does it does it get better than that? Just a standard ass glazed donut. Uh. It it does, I think. <laughs> okay, but it's gonna be some bullshit like tofu matcha uh, from Mister Donut. You're, cl- I you're, only... you're, you're close. Uh, I bet. Um, <laughs> I knew it was gonna be some like fucking. All right, go no, ahead. okay. So for, first of all, there is a Krispy Kreme in. Well, there, there, there's several in in Japan. There's mm-hmm. one in. Uh, there's like many in Osaka. There's one I know of in the train station. Yeah. in Chicho, but there's also one in the Zest shopping center underneath uh, oh. City Hall. So we go there sometimes. Those are great Krispy Kreme. You know can't beat it there's also a place that does creme brulee donuts here in oh, Kyoto okay. Okay. on yeah. on the sanjo shoten guy and it's just like a donut but they pack it full of custard and then they burn yeah. the top of it so it's like creme brulee and donut form so good yeah okay you but are. no the uh, winner what? Uh, the winner <laughs> is this little place called uh kona manju on nishiki the big like kitchen shopping street manju. and they do kona manju okay. and they do their soy milk donuts and they're really tiny they're like bite-sized and you can get 10 of them for 100 yen or like 26 for, no, sorry, 10 for 300 yen or 26 for 600 yen. And they're like, 26 just eat them donuts? after another. They're not that sweet. They're not like sugar coated, but they're a little sweet from the batter. And they're just fluffy and airy and delicious <laughs> yeah, and that, so fucking good. For 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 listeners, uh, Zach is a fucking dork. And like, <laughs> like if there's ever like, what's your favorite thing? He's like, I'll tell you something arbitrary and <laughs> like you've never heard of. It's my favorite. <laughs> They're, 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 they're life changing donuts. The the soy milk donuts is that you said? Yeah, yeah. I I saw those last time I was there, and I thought about getting them, and I was like, no, it's okay. Dude, Damn it's it, the be- it's the best. And they pull them right out of the fryer and put them in a bag, oh. and they're still like piping hot. Oh, they're so good. I'm gonna get That's some after this. I'm gonna candy? get some on the way home. Uh, I I like donuts. I am usually not a sweet tooth type person. Mm. I'm way more of a savory person. So. Mm. I really like donuts, though, when they're like cinnamon sugar. I really yeah. like that combination. It's one of my favorites. Uh, and I'm also a big sucker when things look like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so like when Mr. Donut does those like Pokemon ones, <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy them. <laughs> Even though when I eat sweets, I have like half of one. And I'm like, Tony, you can have the rest. <laughs> okay. Do you, like, do you like old fashioned donuts? Yeah. The cakey ones. I like those more than like normal, what the hell normal you... fried donuts. Nah, dude. Glazed donut. <laughs> get the hell out of here. Just like once a year, have a glazed donut at a, a like a, a coffee shop and, and you're satisfied. That's all you need. Pretty good. Yeah. 
All right. Next question is be- Ooh, this is a loaded question. Mm. <laughs> best this one's good. video game purchase. Can be the best deal, rarest find you have found, or whatever standards you prefer. What's the best video game purchase you have ever made? Um, mine was ooh, Terra Nigma on ooh. on the German Super Nintendo. I I lived in Germany when I was a teen, and I got Terra Nigma and uh, a German Super Nintendo for something like twenty bucks. And didn't even know anything about the game. And so that was probably mine. Just because it was like a lucky mm. find. Yeah. You know? um, uh, so when I, uh, for the first time I came to Japan, when I was working at, at Q for like four months back in 2011, uh, they, they used to do this flea market outside of the city hall on Sundays. And I went and it's mostly, it's mostly garbage. It's like clothes and, you know, knickknacks and toys and stuff. But, someone had a few games set out and uh, one of the games was a Japanese version of Final Fantasy IX, which is one of my favorite games. And it was like, not mint condition, but pretty, fu- yeah, I know. <laughs> pretty, good pretty good condition. It was 500 yen and I was like, fuck yeah. Like, I don't even have a PlayStation here in Japan because I was like living out of a suitcase, but I, I bought it and that's probably my best video game purchase. All right. All right. Nice. And this church is going to be Fantasy. fucking Final Fantasy IX related too. It's going to be like, ah, it was the best Love purchase because it changed my life. Eric I, <laughs> I, okay, I got two. One okay. is Magic Knight Ray Earth on the Saturn because that was one of the first games when I was collecting that I actually paid what I felt was like real money. It was like $80 at the store. And mm. I was like, ooh, mm, $80, you know. And now I have it. And like 10, 12, or however many years later, it's worth a thousand dollars. What? Yeah. Get out. So I'm. Damn. I guess that eighty dollars is worth it. And then Damn. the other one is actually a system. When I the first time I was in Japan, I went to a game store, and sitting there was a Yamaha Kopira. And what is a Yamaha Kopira? You might ask. I am asking. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, <laughs> it is kind of like a Sega Pico, and it plays oh, okay. Sega Pico oh. games. Uh, but it also has like MIDI out and you can hook like a microphone up to it and it can also mm. play its own games that take advantage of its like slightly more advanced like features. MIDI? And okay, it was, sounds cool. Yeah, it was 300 yen and it came like bundled with, it didn't have a power cord and it had some games with it. Mm. And it was, but it's also gigantic. Like this thing is huge and weird shaped. So it's not even like flat. It's like, Almost triangle shape, the way it like props itself up makes it almost a triangle. And imagine huh. packing that. But I was with friend of the show, Chris Kohler, and I was like, man, I really want this thing. It's so weird. And I was like, but I don't know if I can get it home because this thing is gigantic. Right. And he looked at me and he's like, Kinsey, it's 300 yen. If it doesn't fit in your suitcase, throw it in the garbage can. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, take a chance on it. Do it. That's a good and point. I bought it. And yeah, and it I got it home somehow. Oh my gosh. And it's awesome. And like the power cord was really generic. So I have one. And it's all like for little kids. Like it's very like edutainment. But mm. I did sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in Japanese in karaoke on one of the games. Worth it. Worth it. It was worth the 300 yen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next question. Do you ever feel the ever raising bar for graphics is? I think it's supposed to be unattainable. <laughs> Un- untenable. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's untenable. 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 Okay. Yeah. Untenable. Yeah. Do you feel the ever raising bar for graphics is untenable in regards to AAA game development? So I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in first yeah. and say that one of uh, Zach's favorite words is untenable. <laughs> I love untenable. He does say it quite yeah. a bit. Like um, I didn't know it was a word. So. <laughs> Nasty labs. <laughs> um, Zach, this is this is for you, buddy. This, um, is, this is you. Uh, do you feel the rising bar for graphics is untenable in regards to AAA game development? Re- like, um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, the bar the bar is definitely rising, and at some point, you can't simulate reality visually any more than you can. Right? We're gonna hit some peak at some point. Um, but the tools are getting better to to make graphics that look realistic so i i don't i don't know that it's untenable uh but i just i i'm, I'm interested in, in what it means for indie games like as triple a games get 
prettier and prettier or more realistic, how do indie games compete with that? And I think it's just, you know, we have to go in a more stylized, right. distinct visual I don't think you can route. compete. Yeah, yet. you can't. There's, like, no, there's no way. Embrace the fact that we should be making lo-fi nonsense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh and shit! This last question's fucked up. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Who, <laughs> who, put, who, put, who, put the, who put this on I here? I almost didn't put it on here, and I was like, "No, it's good." No, no. I'm doing, I'm doing it. Okay, <laughs> Kinsey. <laughs> who is your favorite person to work with at Chu High Labs, and why? Oh fuck! Do 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 <laughs> So, like, the first person to break here is like is like the real criminal, and the rest of us. Uh, um, so. You know what? Go for it. I'm going to say Mihoko because number one, (laughs) I got to get her an Australian husband. And Uh number two, she's the one doing all the paperwork to get me to Japan. Cop out. Yeah, that is a cop out. (laughs) You're not wrong. It's it's not wrong. She does all of, I mean, like whenever we have, uh, for people that don't know, Mihoko is uh, our studio manager and she's kind of uh, like, this will sound weird, but she's kind of the studio mom as well. And if there's ever a problem, she's the one that she's like, I can fix it. Don't worry. You're very stupid. I can do it. (laughs) (laughs) And so that... Could, should we all just go ahead and say Miyoko? Uh, yeah, yeah very let's, let's, safely. let's do that. That's um, the best. <laughs> yeah, good choice uh, on that one, Kinsey. You saved us. Also, um, let's. We need an Australian man, as Kinsey mentioned. Uh, Miyoko needs an Australian <laughs> husband because she wants to move to Australia immediately. Because she needs a, a passport that's not based on love, it's based on living <laughs> strictly in Australia. All right? You need to get so that let's, visa. Let's break some laws and get her married. All right, well, that's all the time we have. First of all, thank you so much to our special guest, Zach. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And as a reminder, our Halloween event is going on right now in Carve Snowboarding. So be sure to check that out. And that goes through November 26th. And Halloween Forever is on sale on the eShop now through Halloween night. Get it now. Um, so, uh, Zach, you're our guest. Uh, where can people find you on social media? Social media. I'm on Twitter as the Zakeman, the Z-A-I-K-M-A-N. Okay. And that's that's about it. And Instagram have, too, but yeah. Do you have any final words for the uh, audience? Uh, okay. When can I come back? Uh, that's a not a final word. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Soon, I'm the sure final, we'll final, see. The final we'll, word is untenable. <laughs> the final <laughs> word is untenable. And um, you can find me on uh, twitter.com slash the Henry Demos. Kinsey, tell us the final uh, parts and let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> you can find me at Kinzilla, K I N S Z I L A, on pretty much every social media thing. And of course, always follow Chew High Labs at Chew High Labs at all the things. And as always, thank you so much for listening and a big thank you to the Greenlit Podcast Network. And we'll see you in two weeks. Happy Halloween.